Next Wednesday, a great night on ESPN. E, uh, Big East and ACC basketball. It's a lot of fun. There's Bud Carson. Did a sensational job in his first year as a head coach with the Cleveland Browns. And his reward, coming to Honolulu to coach the Pro Bowl. What a terrific defense. Rippon, Rufus Porter on the blitz. Rippon stepped up, throws in complete. Dave Meggett was open, but Rippon was under a lot of pressure to get rid of it. Really not Rippon's fault, not Meggett's fault. Uh, a lot of credit goes to Rufus Porter on the rush. Why couldn't he come around the corner? These guys, once they, set, once they plant that outside foot and start to turn up the field, they actually gain speed as opposed to, to cruise towards the quarterback. Porter had been strictly a special teams player. Then they decided uh, to use that speed and athletic ability as a blitzer, and he's really come through for them. 38-yard field goal attempt by Eddie Murray, who has the only points in the game so far. And that's something you will not see very often, and it looked like Murray and Rippon were talking about the spot. Yeah. It looks like he just caught it flat on the uh, turf a little bit. That area right there also is where the baseball, part of the baseball stadium comes in. And what happens is you get the turf laying down, and so it's a little bit higher and a little bit harder to plant. See him put the ball down. It's down fine. The hold is fine. Now, see, he hits the turf a little bit before the ball. That's what caused it. Just like on a golf shot, if you catch a little bit too much of the grass, Mike, you're familiar with that. Very familiar with that. If you catch a little bit too much of the grass, it doesn't quite go as far as you want it to. Murray had only missed two field goals in two years, and Dave Craig is the new AFC quarterback with 7.03 to go in the hand. Screen to Thomas. Green brought him down at the 25-yard line. It was not a great year for Dave Craig, but in the last four weeks, he was really sensational. There you see for the season, 21 touchdowns, 20 interceptions. But in the last four weeks, he hit 62% of his passes for over 1,000 yards and six touchdowns. Really came on, and Seattle actually, still with a week to go, had a mathematical chance to make the playoffs. The AFC so far has had the ball four times, but they've only managed 12 plays and one net yard. Movement. Dickerson tries to get outside. Flags are down. And Dickerson taken out of bounds at the 37-yard line. We'll check the penalty. Looks like Charles Mann may have jumped early. I think Pat Swilling might have just started his way upfield a little bit, too. Always from the middle of the middle of the first quarter, as the game goes on, the athletes start to get more comfortable. Offside. They start to do things more. 55 defense. It's the clock. Elvis Swilling, but they'll turn it down. They have a first down. Swilling was also coming off an injury plague year. He had uh, pulled abdominal muscle, torn, and you remember the day he told us he had to sit in ice water day after day after day. It was the only way it would heal. He said he regretted going to practice. He regretted going home because he knew what he had to do to heal it. Uh, now he's back 100%. He's in the Pro Bowl. There's no ice water over here. Craig with a quick turn. He's had it a wet with slaughter. He's taken out of bounds. Green was over there along with Jerry Gray. Back to the sideline. And Tom Jackson. We're here with Barry Sanders. Barry, how's it feel to be in your first one? Oh, it's a thrill. You know, a lot of guys worked hard in order for me to get here. And uh, I praise those guys for the Detroit Lions. And it's, you know, it's a wonderful experience to be here. And you are getting a lot of work today. That's good for you? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I love to compete and, and, and get a chance to play against the best. So, uh, I, you know, it's a challenge, and I, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Thanks. Thanks, Tommy. Second and two. Dickerson, a flag down on the delay. Dickerson gets maybe a yard. A reunion of sorts for Barry Sanders and Thurman Thomas. They played together at Oklahoma State. Sanders to back up to Thomas. And another penalty against the NFC defense. And what David Craig is doing is he's taking advantage of the fact that you've got all basic pass rushers up on that defense. Offside, 71 defense. First down. It was Charles Mann that time. Charles Mann, who has really come on in the last two or three years with the Redskins. I mean, continues to improve, has made himself a dominant force. 
And what David Craig is doing is saying, look, if you guys want to line up and come off the ball quick, that's fine. I'll just give you a hard count, and we'll move down the field in five-yard increments. The first and ten from the 45. Dickerson cuts it back, ducked his head, got by Ronnie Lott. No, he didn't. Looked like that would have that been a, a nasty collision. That was a turnstile job. <laughs> Eric expected to get hit. Ronnie said, maybe I can just hold on to him and grab him going by. Dickerson, four carries, 23 yards so far. Watch this. Eric knows there's a collision coming, right? He puts his head down, and Ronnie <laughs> says, no, not quite. I, I hit a lot of guys through the course of the year. This time, I'll see if I can take him down just with my arm. Dickerson won four NFL rushing titles, tied him with O.J. Simpson and Steve Van Buren, but Jim Brown had eight rushing titles. As great as those guys were, they had half of what he came up with. Thomas. Dribbles the ball, bounces inside the 40, still on his feet near the 35-yard line. Gain of 13 for Thurman Thomas, who led the NFL in combined yards from scrimmage this season. The fact that he picked the ball up was a great play alone because he got the good bounce. Then he made three people miss on his way to the game. Watch this here on the left part of your screen. See the ball hit the ground? And up we go. One bounce, a little scoop job. Break one tackle. Green misses him. Swilling misses him. All right, let me see. McDonald misses him. Lott misses him. Let me see who's left. Are there any more guys back here to hit them? This is the best the AFC offense has looked. Dickerson gets a couple. Vaughn Johnson made the tackle. When Dickerson is in there, you will not see the other back carry it very often. No, he has a fly. Here's David Craig looking down at the plays on his wrist to call him. They signal in a number, and it corresponds with, with what is written down on his wrist. Interesting thing in practice, I was talking to the coaches, no matter what play they called, Eric Dickerson would either be a fullback or a halfback, but he always carries the ball. <laughs> so we won't see Eric block anybody. They were going to run a reverse, and Dickerson had to cut it back because there was a lot of congestion by the name of Jerry Ball. <laughs> I guess from now on we'll call him just a lot of congestion. We'll call him congestion. congestion. It's his new nickname. <laughs> he broke through the line and managed to mess up the, uh, the, the play. You see from the right side of your screen, here comes the reverse. Now Swilling starts up the field. He's actually there before Anthony Miller gets there to try and take the ball on the reverse. Dickerson made the smart move and didn't go ahead and try to toss it back to Miller or anything. Craig had somebody jump. It looked like Reggie White on third and ten. Craig over the middle. Completes it to Andre Lee. Broke the tackle and got inside the 20-yard line. Gain of 19. Craig showing the same kind of touch he did near the end of the year when he was so hot. You know, the thing is, is in the beginning of the year, they sat him down for a little while and just gave him a chance to sit on the sideline, take a look at what's 92 happening. 92 defense. Let's decline. First down. Sit him down on the sidelines. Give him an opportunity to examine the field a little bit. Take some time off. Comes back. Does great. Now he's been off since the end of the season. Comes into this game and does a great job. Reed was the AFC's leading receiver in 1989. He dazzled defenders with some great moves after the catch. Here getting to the end zone for a 47-41 overtime win over the Oilers last September. The tremendous athletic ability after the catch. First and 10 AFC, Dickerson with a big hole that closed quickly. Singletary and Green were there. Two minutes, 30 seconds to go. First half of play, it's 6-0 NFC on two Eddie Murray field goals. And this is the first scoring opportunity the AFC has had, and they really need one. They haven't scored a touchdown in seven quarters. David Craig doing an excellent job controlling the offense. I mean, he feels really comfortable. He got his little notepad on his arm, just looks down, calls the play, and rocks off. Second and six. And Craig is not going to get this play off. Matter of fact, Craig turns around and calls a timeout with 2.01 to go. And Bud Carson, I think, wants to know. Why did you do that? He's excited to have him get to the sidelines. <laughs> he says, hey, tell me, David, why did we call timeout with one second to go in the two-minute warning? Let's go to the sideline, Tom Jackson. TJ? Ted, uh, in your great career, lengthy career, anything that you enjoyed, one thing that you enjoyed more than doing anything else, blocking the kicks or making the tackles? 
actually intercepting the ball. That's what I enjoyed. We finally got a chance to get our hands on it. I think you realize that too, being a linebacker yourself. And uh, I guess the, our ultimate goal is making a score with the, either a, a sack for a safety or an interception for a touchdown. Colts, Packers, Raiders, which team did you like playing for more? Well, I like the old Baltimore Colts. Uh, and I had a lot of fun in Green Bay. I was only there for one year. And uh, the Raiders just fit into my program, and I enjoyed my the end of my career with them. Congratulations. The man short, he was a great one. Second and six. Craig to Thurman Thomas to the five-yard line. It will be another AFC first down, and there is a flag down. And it looked like Thomas had his face mask grabbed and is going to be quite slow getting up. Now, this is the last thing you want to see in an all-star game. And it really is. is it's On so the defense. accidental, too. First down. The players are just really trying to reach out and grab them. They're not bringing their feet along. They're not trying to, to really get their legs into the hits. They don't want to hit anybody that hard. So they just reach an arm out. Now, Swilly's just going to reach out and grab. See how he grabs the left one? Now, watch. He'll turn his helmet all the way around. Oh, the old spinner just spun it on. Then he gets hit because he can't see anybody coming because the front of his helmet's in the back. Thomas looks like he's going to be just fine, able to leave under his own power. We'll be back in a moment. You look good on camera. You're not the first who've told me that. <laughs> not 50 good looks, but uh, ruggedly handsome, huh? Yeah. Right? Hey, Super. Hey, <laughs> uh, could somebody get me down from here? Uh, quiet, pumpkin. Daddy's talking to the dad. <laughs> How would you like to be in our video? Me? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just a regular guy. I mean, great looking one, played a little ball, almost went pro, but uh, <laughs> what I really am is just a father who loves his children. Daddy. Shut up. <laughs> How much are we talking about? $3,000. <laughs> what do I have to do? Just sit in the car, look cool, and we'll handle the rest. Uh, guys? Could, could somebody please get me down from here? <laughs> Guys! Boy, I hate this. This is the second time this week somebody has chained me to a fence and wandered off. <laughs> okay, Kelly. <laughs> you made $500. Tripled. That comes to $1,500. And as your agent, my cut comes to $400 some more. And tripled. That's $1,200. <laughs> well, Adam, of the seven. I'll leave you with $300. Aren't you proud of us? Mm. <laughs> Would you like your pain medicine now, Annie? <laughs> oh, well, that'll be $100. And triple, that comes to $300. <laughs> hey, look, Kelly's part on the video is coming up. Daddy? Both Taylor, Swilling, Dolman in the backfield. I can't believe he wasn't in. 12th play of this drive. Akoya nowhere near his potential yet. Right side, touchdown. fitting that Christian Akoya scores on a Sunday because his last name means Sunday. It's a day of wonderful peacefulness and, and there's just a, the biggest gentlest giant in the world getting one for his own day. Akoya with the first AFC touchdown in seven quarters in the Pro Bowl. And David Treadwell will try to give the AFC the lead. Craig the holder. Treadwell has it, and the AFC has taken the lead with a minute 26 to go in the first half. And Dave Craig was four for four on that drive. And I also would have to say this is probably a record. It's the first Pro Bowl touchdown scored by a Nigerian. <laughs> You're right. And it's got to go down in the record books, too. Watch Akoya, a little sidestep, 
and then lean on into the hole. What you got to do is you got to get close to the lineman down here, let them push somebody to the side, and then with his power, just slide on in. There's the big guy. Looks like an excellent block by Anthony Munoz. Go to the sideline, Tom Jackson. Here with Thurman, Thomas Thurman. What happened out there on that hit? Oh, uh, really? I, uh, I was just going across the middle, and uh, I seen about three of the NFC guys, so I just decided I knew I couldn't run over all three of them. I decided to go down to the turf, but before I got there, one of them grabbed my face, man, and just turned it completely 360, and, uh, and I just went black there for about a couple of couple of seconds, but right now I'm back to normal. Now they say that in the Pro Bowl, the guys don't hit the way they hit during the regular season. They say they take a day off here. True or no? Not even true. They, they come here to play full speed. Uh, it's a matter of getting that extra uh, $5,000, and, and when you come here, you're going to pay for it. Man, looking for the extra five. <laughs> All right, TJ. It's amazing. Some of these guys, uh, I don't think, can remember uh, that $5,000 is more than tip money, Joe. Oh, yeah. You can <laughs> <laughs> you, you remember it in a hurry. You know, you don't, actually, if you don't remember it, your wife or your girlfriend, you might just say, you know, we could use that extra piece of furniture at home and, you know, the kids for school, nice clothing. And you get a lot of impetus to be reminded for that little extra money. Treadwell with a low line drive kick. Sharp inside the 10. There's a penalty flag down and Sharp out near the 30-yard line. Rufus Porter was down there along with Leslie O'Neill on special teams. And now we'll check the flag. And the AFC was offside on the kickoff. We'll see what the NFC will decide to do. Coming up at halftime. Chris Berman will be along. Highlights from around the sporting world and a rapid fire review of the 1989 season. You'll love it. And halftime entertainment live from the Pro Bowl here in Honolulu. The Aloha halftime show. NFC turns down the penalty. They'll take the ball at their own 29. This is actually a fun part because you don't have to get plays from the coach at this time. You know, you're out in your own two-minute drill. You go out and you just call your own plays, tell guys to go where you want them to go. Sharp and Rice are the wide receivers. There hasn't been anything even thrown at Jerry Rice since the opening play. Sanders, a little screen. Clay Matthews over there messing up the timing. And Fulcher comes up to make the tackle. Clock running with 1.08 to go in the half. Tried to go to Jerry Rice on the first play of the game. Uh, Ray, uh, Randall McDaniel tried to hit him on an up pad, and I guess Jerry figured, well, that's, that's my one shot. Three-man rush. Over the middle, and there is Jerry Rice, ridden down by Minifield, but not before he got to the 46-yard line, a gain of 22. I get the impression Mark Rippon likes Ernie Zampezi's offense. In his five years with the 49ers, Jerry Rice has established himself as one of the game's all-timers. In 1989, he had an NFL-high 17 touchdowns, including a 68-yarder against the Eagles, his longest of the season, and three, count them, three touchdowns in the Super Bowl. You know, it's so hard to pick the MVP in a Super Bowl. Obviously, Joe Montana certainly deserves it, but Jerry Rice also one that had to be considered for it. And I, you know, I asked him, I said, how much, you know, what, what's in store this year? Last year, you took one week off after the Pro Bowl to start training again. He said he may take 10 days this year. He's not quite sure, probably back to a week. And I said, how much better can you get? And he said, a lot. He said, I want to be five pounds lighter next year. I want to play at 185. He said, then people really have to be scared. Well, he lost 10 this past year, so he'd be quicker if he caught the ball short. And they say he could run a 4-1-40 right now. If he gets any quicker, we'll be able to see him. Williams on the rush against Rippon. Johnson had the interception, and Fulcher picked it off when he bobbled it. Second interception from David Fulcher. Well, Mike Johnson had three chances to try and pick that one off. A very similar route Rippon threw previously to Jerry Rice. Now he tries to throw it again down the field. There's Mike Johnson. There's once, twice, three times, four times. Uh, okay, you take it, Dave. Dave Fulcher, right on the spot again. Look at this. It's a juggling match. Okay. Dave Fulcher just running around the field going, holy mackerel, they're falling out of the sky. I can't <laughs> believe it. Here's another one. Keith Jackson made the tackle. <laughs> the ball's at the 20-yard line. We have 38 seconds to go in the first half, and we'll see if 
the AFC will be able to do anything with it after an impressive drive the last time they had the ball. He's looking for somebody to talk to. Stand on the sidelines going, can I, can I tell you what happened now? Craig, a little play action. Deep sideline, incomplete, intended for Webster Slaughter. Couldn't hold it, and Jerry Gray on the coverage. Gray will move to free safety next year, the position he played in college. Yeah, this is this the last time you should see Jerry Gray play as a, uh, a cornerback. He really He's really looking forward to going back to being a free safety. It's, he said it's like going home. It's more comfortable. He gets a chance to work towards the ball, towards the line of scrimmage. He likes that. Out on the corner, it's a little bit uncomfortable. Although he's made it as a pro bowl player, it's a little uncomfortable for him. And it looks like the AFC doesn't want any uh, part of the last 30 seconds of the first half. They're already leaving the field. They've got a one-point lead, and they, Bud Carson wants to take it to the locker room with him. This has gone a lot like a preseason or a training camp would go. The defense is always ahead, and that's the way we have now. The defenses have asserted themselves in a low-scoring 7-6 half. Well, that is the end of the first half, and the NFC with two field goals, the AFC with a late second quarter touchdown, and the AFC leads the NFC 7-6. That's our first half. Right now, let's go Chris Berman. All right, Michael, thank you very much. And so a touchdown by Christian Okoye has given the AFC the 7-6 lead over two field goals by Eddie Murray. We promised you a close game at half. Now, we understand we're out here in Hawaii, and it's easy to lose track of things that go on everywhere else. Believe us, it can happen to even the best of us. But we here at ESPN always try to keep our pulse on what's going on elsewhere in the world of sports. And today there was plenty on what we Islanders like to call back on the mainland. The Sixers won their 11th straight with a 105-102 win at Milwaukee. Johnny Dawkins led the way with 21 as Philly now ties the Knicks for first in the Atlantic. Charles Barkley suffered a groin injury and is expected to miss the All-Star game. Catch Larry Burnett's conversation with Sir Charles on the Sports Center following the Pro Bowl. Also in the NBA, Detroit won its seventh straight behind 21 from James Edwards. They handed Utah its worst loss of the year, 115-83. The mailman, Carl Malone, was held to 19 as the Jazz scored its fewest points of the season. Utah and the Spurs now tied atop the Midwest. In college hoop, wild one today between Arkansas and Texas. Hogs coach Nolan Richardson left the bench in anger with 14 seconds left after an intentional foul call allowed the Longhorns to grab a three-point lead. But Lee Mayberry RFD's three-pointer at the buzzer tied it at 86. It was overtime. Richardson returned. Number three, Arkansas won it in OT, 103-96. Number 10, Louisville lost at Ohio State, 91-88, also in OT. Jim Jackson's follow with 15 seconds to go sparked OSU. Number one, Missouri pulled away from scrappy Colorado in the second half. Anthony Peelett was one of three Tigers with 17, 93-69 the final. Number five, Duke, had little trouble with Notre Dame. Final at Cameron Indoor Stadium, 88-76. Allah Abdul Nabi scored 22 to lead the Blue Devils. Mark O'Meara repeated his champion at Pebble Beach, firing a final round 72 for a two-shot win over Kenny Perry. On the Cadillac Seniors Tour, Lee Trevino won the Royal Caribbean Classic when Jim Dent double bogey the final hole. The Merrimax takes home 60 grand for the win in just his second regular seniors tournament. Think he'll win some money out there this year? In baseball news, an arbitrator ruled for the Royals in their case with Bo Jackson. Bo knows one million, but he wanted 1.9 million. The Royals win the arbitration. And in other news of dollars and cents, the Buffalo Bills have re-signed quarterback Jim Kelly. Six-year contract extension worth $20 million. The sound you hear in the background, Joe Theismann limbering up his passing arm. We're at halftime here at the Pro Bowl. AFC leads the NFC 7-6. We'll be back and we'll take a look at the 89 season in review. Our style. Give your kids the competitive edge in their favorite sports with America's best selection of instructional sports videos, only from ESPN. Regularly $39.95, now just $29.95 each if you call 1-800-554-9000. Top coaches in basketball, football, baseball, soccer, and tennis teach your kids the basics and help them develop a lifelong love for the sports and a winning attitude. Now on video cassettes, your kids can play again and again. Just $29.95 each, and only from ESPN Home Video. Coaches like University of Arizona's Jerry Kindle show your kids how to improve their game and add to their fun. This 75-minute video cassette demonstrates winning fundamentals of fielding, hitting, pitching, catching, and sliding. 
$29.95 never lets you do so much for a kid. Call 1-800-554-9000 for teaching kids baseball or your free catalog of videos only from ESPN Home Video. The best, the brightest, outstanding original drama on USA. This year, Arnold Palmer and Lee Trevino try to stop him at the GTE Suncoast Classic. Complete three-round coverage begins Friday, live on ESPN. The world's hottest track stars make an assault on world records at one of the fastest indoor tracks. See the Vitalis Meadowlands Invitational, Friday night at 9 Eastern, live on ESPN. the Pro Bowl, the AFC 7 and the NFC 6. I want to get everybody on Chris Berman. One more half and the 1989 NFL season will be over. Unlike many others, it was a bookend season. It began with the 49ers on top and it ended with the 49ers on top. San Francisco began their season here on ESPN in Tokyo and the Pro Bowl Niners are ending their season in the Pacific as well, right here in Honolulu. But let's be more specific about the 1989 NFL season. Outside of the Niners, it was a year of twists and turns. In our own halftime style, let's take a mad dash back. We are the world. We are the children. And all the world's children tried to end their season in the city of New Orleans. With some renewed bids in Wisconsin, once again, they were running with the pack. Another newfound bad company, Marty Schottenheimer's Chiefs, no longer the chefs. And welcome back Steelers, who went from long shot to the playoffs. Exiting stage left, the all of a sudden bad news bears. And no one knew it better than Coach Mike Ditka. Now I don't know if we're capable of winning another football game. Super Bowl a year ago, snowed under this season, Boomer and the Bengals. There were some bouts better than Mike Tyson's, like Thanksgiving's Bounty Bowl, always a holiday in Big D. If you had a bounty, uh, why in the hell would you put it on a kid that's been in a six-week slump? And you hope he don't get hurt. You want to be sure he kicked. I would have said something to Buddy, but he wouldn't stand on the field long enough. He put his big fat rear end into the dressing room. Jerry Glanville stood on the field too long as the Bengals ran it up on his Oilers. They were cocky and doing all their talking and the coach doing all of his talking and all that kind of stuff before the game, and they got humiliated today. Jim Moore really enjoyed the officiating this year. And Jim Kelly sparred with some teammates, but came back strong in the playoffs. There were the Monty Hall Let's Make a Deals. Behind door number one, new commissioner Paul Tagliabue. Behind door number two, new Viking Herschel Walker. Tony Eason was flogged by his owner in New England and ended up down I-95 with the Jets. Art Shell became the answer man for the Raiders. Gene Stallings, canned heat in Phoenix, came to shore with the Crimson Tide. And after all these years, Joe finally did go. And Jerry took his little feet off to sing Oh Atlanta. Was there a better finish this year than on fourth down at Lambeau Field? Where after further review, the Pack did beat the Bears. In Minnesota, Mike Merriweather rumbling, bumbling, stumbling after the block punch to overtime the Rams. But the Vikings tasted their own medicine in Cleveland when Pagel and Waiters pulled off the fake field goal in overtime that left the dog pound jumping. The hit records just kept on coming. Dan Marino, fastest man to 200 touchdown passes. Bo knows 90-yard touchdown runs. He's the first with two. They call him Flipper, do they ever, after 336 yards in receiving. Who set a consecutive field goal record? Well, the Butler did it, of course. Best quarterback rating in the season? Who else? 100 career touchdown receptions for Steve Largent, and then retirement. The same for Ozzie Newsom, who tops all tight ends in receiving. 
the inevitable end for quarterback Neil Lomax. In came the new. Troy Aikman learned about life on a 1-15 team. The Michelin man, Tony Mandarich, often had a flat tire. Barry Sanders left opponents flat as he led the NFC in rushing. Derek Thomas can just flat out rush the passer. Eric Metcalf authored the gazelle-like moves of the year. And then there was prime time, often the fastest moving show and player on television. For outrageous landings, how about Houston's Ernest Gibbons? The Russian judge gave him a nine. Same number 81, same acrobatics for Anthony Carter. Von Bell and let it rain sloshed the Steelers who frolicked in the late season Miami quagmire. Hit of the year, maybe Jim Lachey on Jerry Robinson. Good you? Chris Carter continuously proved that he was the good hands people. In the playoffs, Minnesota and Los Angeles ran into the buzzsaw known as San Francisco. Would Cleveland have their shot in the Super Bowl, or would Denver, or would it matter? No. The 49ers had Golden Joe Montana, who set new Super Bowl standards with five, count them, five touchdown passes, three to Jerry Rice. The 49ers could have scored 80 points if they wanted to against Denver. George Seifert, a first-year winner, and the Niners for the fourth time did go all the way. The usual, a Super Bowl trophy for the San Francisco 49ers. Their fourth, this one with a big-time explosion. What we saw in the playoffs was a team and an organization that dared to reach perfection and came perilously close to doing just that. So many few times in life that we have a chance, in sports or in life, that one gets to see someone reach for perfection. So rather than worry about are the Niners better than the Steelers, just ponder this. The 1989 49ers season was one that we should all tell our grandchildren about. A rare time when the unreachable star was less than a light year away. We're at halftime of the Pro Bowl. The AFC with the only touchdown of the game leads the NFC 7-6. Back with more in Honolulu right after this. Hi, I'm Joe Montana, and I'm going to do something a little crazy. I'm going to challenge all those linebackers singing for Diet Coke, the tennis players, the game show hosts, the singers, any celebrity who's ever done a Diet Coke commercial to come on TV with me right here and take a blind taste test to prove once and for all which tastes better, Diet Coke or new Diet Pepsi. So come on, Miss Wimbledon. I'm serving. Come on, guys. Take your best shot. But remember, this is the taste that beats Diet Coke from an old student. Mm. Remember Brian McKenna? Smart kid. Good ball player. Great hands. Where's he going to college? He's not. Oh, too bad. Studying aviation electronics. But you said in the Navy. Then college. The Navy College Fund. $25,000 for your college education. Today's high-tech Navy. You have the Navy. Like I said, smart kid. Every morning, they go to work. Over 10 million phone cards from U.S. Sprint. The only card that gives you 100% fiber optic sound quality and rates that are still up to 25% lower than AT&T. To get yours free without changing phone companies, call Sprint now. The phone card. In a world that works 24 hours a day, it's the hardest working card in the world. of halftime is brought to you by Acura. Experience in Acura, the most satisfying automobile in America, three years in a row. Hanging seven thus far, the AFC. Hanging six thus far, the NFC. Touchdown for Christian Okoye just before halftime. Better than two Eddie Murray field goals. The AFC 7-6 at half. Here at the Pro Bowl, we're getting set for the second half kickoff in just a couple of moments. Mike Joe and Tommy, our own ambassadors of Aloha, will be back with the second half kickoff in just a moment. Hope you've enjoyed the half. Stay with us. When you think about all the satisfaction you get out of going places, why would you ever want to take anything less than America's most satisfying car? The Acura 
in Tegra. I say, put on some spikes and get the queen a Bud Light. Oh. Bud Light's clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never lets you down. And they're pop tops. Everything else oh. is just a light. How well you carry yourself in business often depends on what you carry in business. Cambridge Business Wear from Mead is important to the way you look as the clothes you wear. Today's Duracell battery keeps punching into the final round because it lasts up to 30% longer than the one from a few years back. Duracell. You can't top the copper top. One airline works harder than any other to make sure that a good landing not only means getting you there on time, but landing your bag in your hand on time as well. United. Come fly the friendly skies. with sun lovers and surfing enthusiasts with waves in excess of 15 feet. The North Shore represents the ultimate challenge to the skilled surfer and to the unskilled surfer. And even just to the tourists to go out and look. It's beautiful on the North Shore of Oahu. The AFC with a late second quarter touchdown leads the NFC 7-6. The National Conference had a couple of first half Eddie Murray field goals. Statistics for the first half, and the NFC really dominated with uh, 85 yards passing, 58 rushing, 143 to 53, but they're down by a point. Well, the other thing was, is they did that all through the first quarter. I mean, Warren Moon, when he played, he had 12 plays, got a total of one yard, one first down, and no point. David Craig, on the series that he played, went for the entire touchdown and the seven points. So, I mean, uh, David Craig managed to, to pick up the AFC, and most of that time of possession came in the second quarter. There you see the sacks, two by the NFC. There's a little 49er fan. Doesn't really know what uh, what he may be witnessing with that 49ers visor on. Uh, they talk about dynasty. The 49ers players don't like to hear that dynasty talk. Ronnie Lott said, hey, that means it's over. <laughs> Seven to six, part of the sellout crowd here at the uh, Pro Bowl. You know, the other part of that, though, Mike, is when you talk to Jerry Rice, immediately after the Super Bowl, the players started talking about the fact that we're going to shoot, shoot for number three. It's going to be a three-peat. They're going to go after the third one. Uh, I really believe that the key to the 49ers going after a third Super Bowl rests in the hands of Mike Holgren. I think if Mike stays, the offense stays with a lot of consistency and continuity, Joe Montana feels very confident and comfortable with him. He's worked with him even when Bill Walsh was coaching. Mm -hmm. I think the chance and the opportunity for the Niners is there. If Mike decides to take one of the head coaching jobs, whether it be Phoenix or New York, uh, I think that it may be a little bit of a reacclimation period again for a new offensive coordinator, somebody that's going to have to call the plays for Joe Montana. And he has interviewed with both of those ball clubs. Woodson is the deep man for Eddie Murray's kickoff as we start the third quarter. Thurman Thomas will take it up the sideline. Huge hole. Joey Browner with the strongest hands in the National Football League dragged him down by the collar after a 35-yard return. Well, there's one guy who plays on the special teams that is not just there because he's in a Pro Bowl. That's one of the main roles of Joey Browner is to be the safety man. Now watch this hole open up. Big block by Tunch Elkin. Look at that. Big hole. Thurman was probably going to head back to the middle and just decided to go back outside. And watch this. If you want to bring somebody down, you take away their center of gravity. Right behind the helmet, right on the shoulder pad. You can yank them down. Everybody goes down like a toy. Joey Browner with that martial arts background. If he gets a hand on you, you're not going to get away. 
Best field position for the AFC in this game as they start from around 47. Warren Moon in there. Brooks on the delay. Wrapped up by Spielman as he gets to the 49-yard line. Chris making his first Pro Bowl appearance for the Lions. A lot of criticism of uh, Spielman when he was drafted by the Lions out of Ohio State. Not very fast, and as a rookie, he played out of control some, his coaches said, but really came into his own, and this is his second year. Led the team with 125 tackles. Second and nine. Everybody jumped. Moon close it out to Okoye, and he couldn't hold it. Okoye caught only two balls all year long, and that's something that they would like to see him be able to do better, be able to catch the football. We'll check the flags for you. Give a guy a break. He's only been playing the game six years. You <laughs> want him right. to do everything for crying out loud? Well, he certainly has the potential. But he did not see a football until 1983, let alone try to play. Here's a guy. He doesn't make the Nigerian Olympic team, so he decides to go to college, plays three years there, and then he played three years as a professional. And it's an offside call against the NFC. There is his uh, career reception totals. Did catch 24 in 1987. But probably a good idea if you have a 260-pounder, why not just give it to him rather than throw it? Be like, be like throwing to a guard. You know? <laughs> Make guards eligible. Put them out in passing. Weather conditions here, 81 degrees, very windy, 30 mile an hour gust, so the wind chill is about 79 for those of you <laughs> in the north and the east. Moon screen to Okoya, he's got Matthews out in front. Good defense by the NFC, Spielman was right there to make the tackle, Tim Harris also in the vicinity. Now you start to see the athletes set into the flow of the defense. They read the screen. They go back to their old keys. What they've done is they've put up with the coaches. They've got the new system. They said, okay, fine, we'll do it your way. Now all of a sudden they go back into their drops. They react the way they normally do, and they become more comfortable playing the defense and the offense. Third and 12 now for the AFC. Moon only two out of five for nine yards. Starting quarterbacks have not had uh, an outstanding time here. Four-man rush. What a defensive line the NFC has. Harris with the interception off the block by Reggie White. And there come the six guns. Reggie White stuffed the pass, and Harris made the diving interception. Reggie takes the inside rush. There you see him going the inside on Chris Hinton. Gets the right hand on it. Now look at Harris. He finds the ball and just lays out like mm. a wide receiver. Some play. Bounces off his hands, manages to get his hand underneath it and make the play. Harris, a sensational athlete. The pride of Green Bay, and now the NFC in great spot at the 32-yard line. And it looks like they are uh, taking a look at it upstairs. That's what you do. You trade your helmet in for one of those little visors now. There they go. They want to see. They want to see. He. The ball bounces out of his hand just for a second there. See it? Now they want to make sure that he got his arm underneath it, or did it hit the ground first? Better angle here. Oh yeah, the ball is on his arm. There's absolutely no question. Just for the effort, they should have given it to him. Play stands as called, and it's a first down for the oh. NFC. They have a chance to regain the lead. Well, you start the game throwing to Jerry Rice. Why not do it again? Rice, first down. Drag out of bounds by Albert Lewis, the chief sensational corner. Lewis and Ross both made the Pro Bowl this year. Cunningham says one of the reasons he wanted to be in this game was to play with Jerry Rice. I was looking forward to working with Rice, and I think that he's so smooth. He doesn't look like he's going fast, but he is. And uh, I think that being able to work with him gives me, uh, gives me confidence. So it wasn't like I thought he couldn't do it because everybody knows he can. I just like the opportunity to be with him and throw the ball to him. 
Having Barry Sanders on your side isn't bad either. Sanders down to the 16-yard line. 11 carries, 34 yards. And I think that's the thing that's bothered defenses ever since Jerry Rice has been in the league. He does not look like he is that fast. And yet when the ball's in the air, he sprints by people. He has that great ability to drop it one more gear and just turn it on. I mean, you're running neck and neck with him. He doesn't look like he's running. You're really going hard to stay with him. And then all of a sudden, he pulls away and accelerates for a touch. Second and four. Rice dives to the 10. He's got a first down. Let's go to the sideline. Tom Jackson. TJ? Here with Timmy Harris. Timmy, you and uh, Reggie made quite a combination. Yeah, we ran a little beast on there. And, uh, I left him wide open to block the pass. And I called him in the air, you know, try to get him run. But somebody's already on my back. You catch that ball or you trap it? No, I caught that ball. <laughs> I caught that all the way. <laughs> I was pretty upset. I missed uh, missed Warren Moon in the end zone earlier, so I tried to make a big play later on. So finally came through, so I'm looking forward for the next one. And you only pulled out one gun this time. Yeah, because it wasn't a sack. I only pulled out sacks and I have to get two, two guns in. When I get one gun, just a run play or something like that. So I shot him pretty good. We might see two before the game's over. TJ, I bet we will. Sanders, great stutter step to the six-yard line. Some guys do that and don't gain any yardage. He does it and picks up four. And he, but he's not moving forward. It looks like you know he literally comes to a complete stop, laps that leg out, and then all of a sudden, boom, he's back up in the hole. Has great vision. I really believe that runners, Eric Dickerson's that way, although Barry Sanders is a little different. He runs from the only about five or six yards deep. Dickerson runs from about seven or eight, so he has a chance to see from tackle to tackle. Barry Sanders has to make quicker decisions up inside. I think it's even more difficult, which is more of a credit to him. Second and six. The NFC can make a first down inside the one-yard line. Meggett and Hilliard are the backs. Cunningham scrambling. Fumble! And it looked like Guy McIntyre from the 49ers out hustled everybody and picked it up. Cunningham hit from the blind side, and McIntyre does make the recovery. Randall Cunningham, most dangerous when he starts to run. Now he steps up into the pocket. Bruce Smith, Smith. comes flying from nowhere. Off a doll, almost makes the play. McIntyre finally winds up with it. Bruce Smith almost did not play in this game. He considered going home because his father's fiance uh, died. Tommy Lathan and his fiance Carmen and he were very uh, torn up about it. And Bruce told me that... He considered going home, but decided uh, that it would be better if he stayed and played this game, that this is what the family wanted him to do. Third and 11. Cutting in to Maggot. Touchdown! At 5'7", 180, he got lost over the middle. Well, Dave Meggett doing what Dave Meggett does best. He just comes out of the backfield. He'll let the linebackers drop into the coverage. Remember, there's not a lot of complex. They can't double up on people. Now he just cuts in really where there isn't anybody home. All the linebackers have gone back out to cover the wide receivers. Now he's got to push Keith Jackson out of the way to get in the end zone. Meggett had five touchdowns in his rookie year, all over 30 yards, and then a 76-yard punt return against the Raiders. So he just had a sensational big play first year. Randall Cunningham just 3 for 11 in the first half for 30 yards, and on that drive, he was 3 for 3 for 26. 13-7 NFC, 10-17 to go, third quarter. Who could ask for anything more? <laughs> ask him if it has a five feet. What you got? Part of the device. Oh, this is artwork. This is real damn artwork. Well, I'm glad you like it. No, you don't get it. This is real pro stuff. I haven't seen it. She must distinct. Now, generous. Something kind of sailing to the night. Films of yesteryear come alive in the classic collection. There's thrills, kills, and adventures.
and it's a deadly game of murder at the drive-in Saturday night. Nobody kills cops in my town. Nobody. The suspense keeps right on brewing with thrillers. And beautiful ladies show us their best Friday after dark. Coming later this month, Dustin Hoffman. Control, but see Queen Story for 18. But I'm an excellent fiber. You know how to drive? Yeah. More movies, more choice. In February on Cinemax. ESPN special presentation of the AFC NFC Pro Bowl is brought to you by Isuzu, the first car builders of Japan. By Budweiser, Beachwood A's for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Cambridge Businessware from Mead Products. Beautiful scenery in Hawaii. John Offerdahl being tended to on the sideline. You see blood on the elbow. They were also uh, working on a leg earlier. When he's trying to go with that fumble, he uh, took a real good shot from Guy McIntyre as he tried to reach down and get it. Woodson from the five. If he had gone outside where his blocker Brooks was, he might have picked up another 10, 15 yards on the play. As it was, he got it back to the 35-yard line. Jerry Gray made the stop. It was real interesting through the course of the week. As great as these athletes are, they still like to share information. Frank Minifield was holding a little bit of a clinic for Ron Woodson, explaining to him how he studies a guy in a quarterback's drop when you cover him one-on-one. -on -one. He said, you know, you backpedal a certain way when it's a three-step drop. It was very interesting to watch athletes at this level compare how they you know, apply their trade. And there's a great sharing of information at this team. Moon back to throw, the quick out to Miller. Gray knocked him out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Miller was number two in the AFC this year, almost 1,250 yards, had 1,252 yards. Number one in the AFC in receiving touchdowns with 10. Track background out of Tennessee really has come on strong for the Chargers. Bobby Beathard now, the new general manager of the San Diego Chargers. Start to build another dynasty there, like he did in Miami and helped with Miami and, of course, Washington. He's had a brilliant career. Brooks on the toss. Millard wouldn't let go. Brooks very durable. Let's go to the sideline again. Tom Jackson. Jack Lambert, nine-time Pro Bowler, 11-year career. What would you do with the 49ers? I have pondered this often. What would the Steelers defense do with the Niners? Punch. <laughs> I think they got a great offense. Uh, what makes them so great is they have a great offensive attack uh, running and passing. But you guys were as physical as they came. Well, I think we would have matched up pretty good with them. We had some linebackers that could cover people coming out of the backfield. I think that's one of the things you have to do to have success against them. Congratulations, Jack. Thank you. Very refreshing to hear Jack Lambert not say we'd have killed him. I think he understands reality as well. <laughs> Third and five. Moon under pressure. Charles Mann almost had him. Spielman got a hand on it, but Warren Moon with a great individual effort. Go forward and got the first down. Tough run by Warren Moon, who's coming off his best year. And there is, we have seen a rainbow every day that we have been in Hawaii, Joe. It's, I know, and that one's as beautiful as every one, Mike. Every day we've gone to the golf course, we've had to drive through a rainbow. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it's a shame. Yeah, well, life's I, tough over here. I saw one today while I was sitting by the pool, too, come to think of it. <laughs> the report on John Offerdahl, Actually, uh, shoulder injury, he will not be back. I'll tell you, I saw another one when I was sitting on the deck. There's John all uh, taped up with the ice bag. Yeah, it's a tough lifestyle out here, it really is. First and ten on Moon's effort, he'll go back to throw. Guns that one, Slaughter couldn't hold it, Gray was right there. Boy, have we seen some sensational secondary coverage. These guys are on top of their receivers. This game is built for the guys that can cover one-on-one, -on -one, and they're the people that are here. You don't see a lot of zone, you won't see zone corners in this game. These all are specialists at covering people one-on-one. -on -one. Watch the timing of this hit. Now, Webster's got a shot at it. Ball hits him literally in the face, but Jerry Gray times it perfectly just to throw his concentration off. Fourth straight Pro Bowl for the Rams corner, who will go to free safety. Now, he, now he's going to have to make it at safety. He probably will. Warren back there directing traffic. Now, now another thing, the reason why he calls timeout is 
you have to understand that they're only using the 30-second clock in this game, not the normal 45, so the quarterbacks have to speed it up a little bit. Moon takes the timeout. There's 8.14 to go in the third quarter, and we'll be back to Honolulu in a moment. You can teach your kids the fun of soccer from the right techniques to the right attitude with the help of a great coach and ESPN Home Video. promised me you would have this gang in custody two weeks ago. Instead, they're making us look like a bunch of, uh, the, oh, the, uh, the ones that are very funny. Uh, the kings have them. Bring me my fo uh, fools. Making us look like a bunch of fools. Sir, I can assure you. Save it. People are afraid. They're taking their business elsewhere. The merchants are all over me. Some very important, uh, the ones. You also being ruffled here, and now the governor is involved. He wants this crime wave stopped immediately. With ESPN Home Video. They threw to see that they uh, acquiring it. They tortured people for refusing. Mr. Mayor, you're up. They what? 20,000. is trying to watch it. Yes. It's good. It's on the Learning Channel. It's free. And it's the next step in civilization. Business, career, how-to, college prep. The Learning Channel. Take the next step. As we told you before, a rather relaxed atmosphere out here in practice for the Pro Bowl. And that meant my partner actually got to play quarterback at some of the workouts. He had fun, didn't you? I loved it. I really did. Except that instead of letting me throw the wide receivers, they let me throw the defensive linemen. There's one down the field to uh, Ch Charles Mann. Now, the amazing thing is, is how fast he can run. There's Chris Dolman going down the field. Look at the spiral. Look at the delivery. <laughs> Look at the hand. Oh, no, I don't Just the throw alone had to be worth seven, eight million, <laughs> I would think. Yeah, he's ready to go, folks. Anybody needs a quarterback, just uh, contact me. I'm his agent now. <laughs> Moon on second and ten. Terry Ball may have been offside. Moon over the middle. Ronnie Lott had the interception and couldn't hold it. There is a flag down on the play. We'll check it. Lott is the leading interceptor career for the 49ers. 48. Penley will go against the NFC defense. 48 interceptions. That broke the record of Jimmy Johnson. One of his boyhood Outside. idols. 93 defense. Still second down. Lott has just had maybe the best career of any safety that has ever played this game. I mean, starting in 86, he had 10 interceptions, which was his, his career high, and then he's had five of the la in the last three years after that. I mean, he, j he is truly the man that holds together, I believe, that secondary of the 49ers. He gets everybody in the right position, plays the center field, and just directs traffic. That's eight more interceptions in his career during the playoffs. Second and five for Warren Moon. 8.07 to go third quarter. Okoya. Rumbling up the middle down to the NFC 41-yard line. He is a load. Of course, we were kidding you the, uh, about your practice uh, habits here with the teams this week, but look at what Joe Theismann did in the Pro Bowl in two appearances. All these records, and this was uh, from 83 and 84, and they still stand. You did not throw an interception. You're probably more proud about that than anything else. I really am, but I'll tell you, in all truth, every one of those records is only indicative of the guys that I had a chance to play with, Mike. I mean, you get over here to play with these athletes, and it's, it's a thrill, and it's exciting, and you want to do the best you can. Moon to Miller. He lost the ball. Akoya tried to get it back and couldn't. We'll see if it's ruled a complete pass and then a fumble. And the battle's still going on. The NFC indicates they have it, and they do. Anthony Miller just going to run a real quick hitch. Plant that outside foot. Stops. You know, you almost got to go back and wonder if they're going to look at this one to see if he really had total possession of the ball. Granted, it hit him in the stomach, 
but did he really have possession long enough for it to be called in a completion? Joey Browner got the did. recovery. There it is again. Now, does he have the ball? I'm not sure whether he, I really don't know whether he had it long enough. It looked like he had, it got to his stomach and then they got swatted away. But the officials think so, so we're going to go on. NFC football are already up 13 to 7, and now we have a beach ball on the field. I'll tell you something, that thing blew a long way because we're inland a little bit. George Toma running out and getting it, making sure his field is kept nice and clean. Groundskeeper Emeritus. Oh, no. oh. oh he killed it. George <laughs> just wasted one. <laughs> Anything on George's field is free game. Cunningham on the run. Complete to Carrier. Minifield brings him down at the 28-yard line. And Mark Carrier, the Buccaneer, in his first Pro Bowl game, 32. The beginning of that drive, that's the fifth NFC drive that starts outside the 40-yard line. They have not had a long way to go and only managed to put up 13 points. But this is what Randall Cunningham does. He starts up the field, causes the defense to come to him, creates an opening for his wide receivers downfield, and as good a job as Minifield did, Carrier still manages to come up with the completion. That's where the beach ball came from, to the left of your screen. I told you, blew a long way in. Well, that's where the beach is. Sanders tried to cut back. Mike Johnson waiting for him. And Michael Dean Perry also there. Sanders had a lot of action, not a lot of yards. Hasn't had too many opportunities to, to gain much. 38 yards on the day. Really what you do in a game like this is what you get, you basically pick up by yourself. Up front now for the NFC, Zimmerman, McDaniel, Hildenberg, Fralick, and Slater. As everybody on this roster gets a chance to play quite a bit. Fake to Sanders, nice play action by Cunningham. Pass to unload and too high. Intercepted. Picked off by Clay Matthews. Matthews looking to lateral the football. Nobody there to lateral it to, and he goes down. So reminiscent of the, the game where he intercepted a pass that we did, and then turned around and just threw it up in the air and gave it back to the other team. That was that last game of the season against Houston. He turns around after he gets the ball, and Bud says, hey, thanks a lot for holding on to this one. I really appreciate it. 27-yard return. It's and declined. the penalty is First against foul. the NFC. It's declined. Cunningham's pass behind Keith Jackson and a real smile on the face of Bud Carson. I know he was just standing there waiting for him to bounce the ball back to somebody. There's Clay Matthews. Now look, they take the little reverse. Somebody running the other way. Look at him switch the ball. He knows what he's doing. Protects the ball, tucks the elbow over it. Now he falls down when somebody gets real close. Break for the AFC, trailing 13-7 with 5.39 to go in the third quarter. Moon under pressure, hit from behind. Dolman got there. The NFL sack leader with a different dance. That's a new one. Yeah. That's a new one. That's his Pro Bowl sack dance. Left side of your screen, Chris Dolman. Like I said, the most difficult thing is for the offensive lineman to try and block these guys one-on-one. -on -one. Dolman just comes around, swats the ball loose. Tim Harris almost manages to get to it, but Max Mantoya manages to make the recovery. Third time that uh, the AFC quarterback has been sacked, it's been Warren Moon every time. Dolman, pretty good numbers for a guy who started as a linebacker and wasn't cutting it. Switched into defensive end, he's an all-pro. Akoya, the Nigerian nightmare, and that's why running over people and everybody who was in on the tackle is getting up slow. Ronnie Lott just came flying in. He's probably asking himself now, why? Why did I do that? You know, I didn't I didn't hit Eric Dickerson head on. I decide I want to hit Christian Akoya head on. I mean, yeah, that, that was purely an instinctive move. I'm sure if he had a chance to think <laughs> about it, he wouldn't do it again probably saying to himself, judgment, judgment. judgment. That's right. Got to make good judgments in these games. Ball at the 39-yard line. 4.47 to go, third quarter. Moon with that short drop, intercepted by Gray. Short right come. Gary Gray. Touchdown. 51 yards.
Warren Moon wants to go inside. Gets a little bit of pressure from Tim Harris. Brian Blades can't quite get there. Looks like Lawrence Taylor might have tied him up just long enough. Jerry Gray picks it off. Once he gets in the open, nobody's going to catch him. Jerry Gray in his fifth year out of Texas. Six interceptions this year. Return one of those for a touchdown. 27 yards. Nineteen seven NFC. Murray will try to make it twenty. And does. So defense has made big plays. And we'll be back in a moment. When you're choosing your business wardrobe, selecting everything down to the last detail, don't forget the last detail. Cambridge Business Wear from me. As important to the way you look as the clothes you wear. When I played football, I crunched quarterbacks. But now I crunch these, JB's pigskins. The new pork rind still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Hi, can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for a Cherokee. Right this way. But this is an Isuzu Trooper. It's a much better buy. It is? The Trooper has four-wheel disc brakes. Cherokee doesn't. I didn't know that. The Trooper has more cargo space. Really? And sells for about a thousand bucks less. You're kidding. Here, take a test drive. Sure is lucky I ran into you. Oh. I wouldn't call it luck. Now, generous factory cash could mean big savings on a Trooper during Isuzu's sale into the 90s. He always lived his life on the edge. You want to light my cigarette? Shy thing, aren't you? But now, he's found something good about right or wrong. More dangerous. We'll never get out of Mexico alive. Where is she? Kevin Costner. Revenge. Where is she? Rated R. Starts Friday, February 16th at select theaters. Just around the corner, this spring, we're covering the national pastime full-time. Major League Baseball comes to ESPN. Major League Baseball just around the corner, and we have about a quarter and a half left of the Pro Bowl from Honolulu. That 51-yard touchdown return, the second longest in Pro Bowl history. Murray will be kicking off to Woodson. The Steeler waits at the five-yard line. High short kick. Bounce, three ball. Thurman Thomas came up with it, but just barely. Quickly downfield, Eric Allen of the Eagles nearly got there first. On the interception by Jerry Gray, watch the left side of your screen, number 53, Vaughn Johnson's going to take off and head out to cover in the flat. Now he's taking off the cover of the running back. Lawrence's tail.